The angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news. Good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Uh, one of the core values of our church is the Jesus story. So most of you probably saw it when you walked into the church building today. Out on that wall, there's those, uh, on that big wood sign, we've got three phrases. God's glory, the Jesus story, and San Diego. That reflects our three core values. That we are a church that exists for God and his glory. We exist to worship and praise him. And that we're a church who's centered. We want to be centered in the Jesus story. Who Jesus is and what he has done. And that our mission is to reach as many people as possible in the city of San Diego with that message. The Jesus story. The one word, the Bible gives one word to summarize all of what the Jesus story is. And it's the word, the gospel. Gospel. Uh, the Jesus story is the gospel. And the gospel, it's, uh, that word gospel is actually in our text today. It gets translated in verse 10 as good news. I bring you good news that will be for all people. That, those two words, good news, from one Greek word and that our English Bibles are translated from, from the Greek word euangelion. And if you were to, to read it literally then, it would, it would really read, I bring you the gospel of great joy that is for all people. The gospel in its very heart and nature is something that is meant to bring great joy. The Jesus story is meant to bring great joy, and it's for all peoples. It's news. I don't dislike the good news translation. It tells us something important, that this, this is something new. This is newsworthy. This is a, this is a big deal. A major announcement. It's, it's a big enough announcement that it needs angels to announce it. And it's news that's so good it brings great joy. And for all kinds of people, even shepherds. Even shepherds. Look at our passage again. Angels show up and says that this is going to be a sign to them. That when the baby's born in a manger, that that's going to be a sign. Now, why did the shepherds need a sign apart from... The fact that everybody already thinks that they're crazy for being shepherds, it just, that's kind of weird. Like, you know, no one would, would believe them. And so the angel tells them, look, um, this is going to be the sign, and then, then you'll know. The baby's going to be born in a manger, a feeding trough. That's, that's weird. Babies aren't typically born in a feeding trough. So, that's different. Now, it it only happened because all the hotels somehow in San Diego were all booked. And so they went up to the Del Mar fairgrounds and the, some guy there let them sleep in the stables. Uh, <laughs> so the shepherds, they, they go and they see this. They I want to I go check this out. They, they make haste and they go and they see baby Jesus lying in this feeding trough and and they realize they're not hallucinating. And verse 20 says, then they, they, they return glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. I mean, they are elated. They are stoked. They're, they're filled with great, great joy. They're really happy. So you gotta get, you got to get our heads around this. Imagine this. Imagine you're a shepherd. You're, you're lowly. Some of the lowest of the low. You're, you're not someone that you nor anyone else would expect God to have all his, I mean, angels, they're like at the opposite end of the spectrum. Like, shepherds are the lowliest of the low. Angels are like the highest of the high. I mean, they're special creatures of God. And he has his angels announce to you the birth of his son. <laughs> Gives you this incredible and powerful message. How do you think that would make you feel? God, God and his through his angel, shows up to give you this special news. I think there's, there's part of, of that that God means for us to, to hear and to feel today. To feel that, that we are special. That, that, that we are special in God's sight. This, this news and this announcement from the angels to the shepherd that's also for us here and now Today, I, I believe that God wants you to, to know and to hear and to feel that you are special this morning. You are special in his sight. 
He, he uniquely created you with a unique fingerprint, with a unique personality, with unique giftings. And God, he's really interested in you. You're special to him. So special that he sent his son Jesus for you. Here's the thing. When we begin to believe that, when we begin to believe that we are special to God, you know what that does? It starts to fill your heart with joy. God, you care about me? I'm special to you in your sight? That's what hearing this message about Jesus is intended to do. It's meant to give you great joy, to bring us joy. A joy is found in Jesus. Now I want to dig into this thing that the angels say when they say in verse 10 that this Jesus will be for all people. So let's get into our second point for today, the joy of all peoples. The angel says that part of what makes this gospel news message good news is that it's for all people. For all people. So, so let me ask the question, why do you think it's significant that it's for all peoples? Uh, you know, I think in part because there's been this dominant idea that has been around for centuries, still around today. It basically says something along the lines of if you are rich or, or wealthy, have a lot of money, if you're born into the right family, into the right race, into the right country, then that means that you will be privileged and good things will come for you and your life will be good. Okay. Now, to a certain extent, this often seems true at least by looking in on the outside. However, uh, America, who by any reasonable standard is far better off than most countries of the world, um, is statistically reported as being the most unhappy people of the entire world. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But a lot of us, it's so easy to get our our minds and, and our hearts wrapped around this idea that, man, if we just, if the right circumstances are in place, if I just, if I just have enough money, if I just have a, a, a good enough job, if my health is just good enough, if I, if I have these things, I'm able to have enough vacation, then my life will be happy, then it will be good, then I will have joy, I'll have the life that I long for and that I so desperately want. See, the implicit message that's wrapped up in this is that if I have money and possessions and things and the right life, then my life will be good and I will, I will have joy. I have a friend who was uh, born, first of all, into a very wealthy family. And then his, on top of that, his dad died in a huge life insurance policy and all that. But, I mean, he's been set off from the start. He bought his first house when he was uh, 21. I uh, bought this condo, actually the whole top floor of one of the condos downtown in San Diego overlooks the whole city. I mean, beautiful place. Uh, hung out there a bunch with him. He's got all kinds of cars. One day we were uh, we were at his place and we were out on the balcony overlooking the, where you could see all of San Diego Bay. And, and he turned to me and he said, you know, Dwayne, uh, life really is better with money. And the people who say it isn't, it's just because they don't have it. Um, it was, he was just like showing off, you know, but those words hit me. I'll never, never forget when he said that. So I'm a few years later after that, he had bought another place up in Manhattan in New York. And so I'd gone up there. There was a wedding. And so me and my friends, we went to see him and hung out. And he, um, I, actually, I got to tell you first, before I get to that, I got to tell you about his cars. He had this Porsche um, and he let me drive it once. <laughs> this is totally irrelevant to the sermon, but I was... I was driving up to 163 going like 130. It was sweet. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I kind of get it. You think money is better. But I'm with him a few years later in New York. Buys another, another place in, in Manhattan. And we're hanging out. We go to dinner. He just seemed really down. And I asked him, like, how, how are you doing, man? Um, like, how are you really doing? And he said these words I'll, I'll never forget. He said, you know, Dwayne, it's just meaningless. It's all meaningless. None of it matters. I have all the money in the world, and I'm the more miserable than I've ever been. See, a lot of times we think, man, if I just had money, if I just had status, if I just had the, the things I think that I want, then I'll be happy, but it will never provide that for you. So if it's not any of those things that really brings us joy, then, then what is? And I think what the 
text is telling us today that this line is saying is that Jesus, when he is a savior for all people, that's got to tell us something, that there's then a, there's a common denominator then among all of us people. Everyone, everywhere, at one time or another, will experience being alone and feeling estranged. Like no one else knows what it's like to be you, to live the life that you've lived, to go through what you've gone through, um, and get very isolated in our lives. It starts with getting disconnected from God and then disconnected from other people. And, and you, can, you can end up being around people but never having any real conversation where you ever really get beneath the surface. Um, but the funny thing is, is if you, you're actually able to get beneath the surface with someone, you find that essentially everybody's kind of struggling with the same thing. That all of us are dealing with different fears, different hurts, different longings, and ultimately all of us really are needing and desiring God, needing his joy. The message of the gospel from the angel here says that it's about a savior for all peoples. And I'm, I'm the one saying peoples with, with an S because um, I don't think he's just making a class distinction between the rich and the poor. And I don't think he's saying that every single person will be saved and embrace this savior. Uh, so I say peoples with an S, different, all kinds of different peoples. I think that's what really getting at. That there's none to whom this good news gospel message about Jesus does not and cannot apply for. That, that Jesus really is a sufficient savior for all. 